back at it. I got this all wired up. And this wire is going to tuck between there. Like that. And this is going to get pressed into this groove so that when I tighten this down, it'll act as a uh, strain relief. That's pretty snug. The other thing I could do is I could actually get a cable clamp and uh, maybe bolt it right here if I wanted to. If I find one of those hanging around, I might just do that. For the time being, I think that's going to work. So now, I'm just going to check, make sure my yeah, nothing's shorting down on the other side over there. So we should be able to fire this up. Um, this old head connection here. There we go. Make sure I've got it disengaged anyways. And I've got the switch facing the right way. So don't worry about that. I did bolt the lathe down to the bench now. Tipping backwards when I engage that. All right, so now I'm going to uh, mount my switch. Okay, I screwed the switch in. I'm going to put the switch plate on, but if you notice, the switch plate has got some damage right there. So I'm going to try and uh, straighten out that corner. Okay, so. First, I'm going to just try and roll this corner out a little bit. Now that I've got it close, I'm going to use this vise to try and straighten that edge. Alright. Now, there's a general waviness to this whole to this whole thing. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to find let's see, a couple of pieces of flat steel. I think I've got there's a couple of pieces of steel that I keep over by my uh, shop press. better. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Might not look it on the camera, but trust me it is. Alright, so that's all set. I uh, just disengaged the compound drive. Everything looks so much cooler than it faster. All right, so no more unplugging it, plugging it in every time I want to turn it on and off. Oh, in case anybody noticed that the lathe looks like it's going downhill, uh, that's because I actually have this end on this roll away thing here because I needed to move it out of the way a little bit. And quite frankly, we're going to be probably getting ready to move it uh, down the other end of the basement completely out of the way as I continue to make more room for the... Uh, the uh, major disassembly on the uh, Hendy. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to do before I stopped working on the Atlas for now until I fabricate that um, support that's broken down the other end is I want to get my change gears straightened out because I know I, I found some gears in a box that were uh, near the lathe when I got the lathe so I know I have some and then I just got that whole set um, quite a few gears in and I want to figure out between all of the gears I have what constitutes a full complete set keep that with this lathe and then sell my spares well guys I'm almost there uh, 
you know, I'm almost to the point where I can't do anything else other than the, uh, other than until I uh, replace that uh, broken bracket down the end there. Uh, so tonight I'm just trying to figure out what else I can do. Uh, I'm going to put on my change gears, um, the ones that were on there when I took the machine apart, and at a later date I'll, I'll go find that other box of gears and explore what's in there. And then uh, I did clean this up better tonight. This is the cover that goes uh, that goes over here. So I gotta uh, put that on. That just uh, how does that go? I think this just goes like this underneath this cover here, underneath this screw. All right, so I tighten that cover on, and then I uh, I put my Jacobs chuck back in. Now it took me a couple minutes of studying this threading chart to uh, to figure out exactly how this works. But um, basically, you've got a diagram up here, and this shows that banjo bracket. And you'll notice that uh, right here, they're uh, calling this the screw. And what that corresponds to is that's right here, the end of the lead screw, where it comes out right here. Okay, and then we've got uh, this right here, they're calling position C. And what they're talking about there is they're talking about this right here. Okay, so that's position C. And then they're talking about... Uh, position A and position B, those are actually this gear right here. Um, if I loosen this up, so if I run it all the way out to here, that's position A. And if I run it all the way back into uh, here, that's position B. And the way this all works is you basically look at your chart and you figure out what you want to do. Sorry if I'm a little unsteady with the camera because I'm actually, I've got it on the tripod, but I'm holding the tripod because I'm going to set the tripod up on the other side in a minute. But you come down here and you can actually see uh, far left column is your threads per inch. And uh, say, for example, you wanted to do 72 threads per inch, a really fine uh, threading setting. Uh, you come to the first column, screw. You come down and it says 96. So what they're telling you is that on this shaft you need a 96 tooth gear. And then you'll see that next column is blanked out, idler stud. And what they're telling you is that you don't use the idler stud in um, in this uh, for that setting. So that means that this is not going to be used for that setting. And then next uh, position doesn't matter because you're not using it and then next it, you'll see where it says compound it says 3296 and what they're telling you there is they're telling you that you're going to need um, two gears stacked 32 and a 96 now it looks like all that was on here when I took this lay of the part was this little gear here uh, these two 96 tooth gears which I have off right now and this stacked gear right here. So uh, looking at this now, I'm pretty sure that one of these 96 tooth gears is going to go on the screw. At least that's where it was, I think. And then if I look at down here, um, you'll see that that corresponds for uh, anything from 36 threads per inch on, but also down here. It's got the uh, feed rate in, uh, per revolutions of the spindle. And you'll notice that the two feed rates here are also 96. So I'm going to put the 96 on there. So these gears have a double keyed arrangement here, and that will engage on the two key ways on like this small gear right here. Um, actually, the gear is a separate gear that means this piece take that off, you'll see that little piece. But I think I had, well I had this uh, Woodruff key right here that was in my parts jar with all of this. So I think this Woodruff key came out of here. So I think what's going on is 
think maybe there's one of these missing from over here, and then something was fabbed up. So let's take this off and take a look. Not a washer looks factory, but then you see this spacer right here looks like something that was made out of aluminum. And then this spacer right here. That's original or not. That looks original. So there is a uh, keyway in this field right here. So put this of key in. Got it in there, but it's not in the right position. Now I can't get it to come out. Give me a screwdriver. Good one keep this up. There we go. Now I can clearly see that. <coughs> Slot. Interesting, why does this gear want to go on? Hmm. Might have to go back and look at the early videos I shot. Refresh my memory. Okay, I just didn't have that Woodruff key down far enough. So now slide this gear on. Question is, this gear go all the way on towards the back? Or did one of these spaces go on first? In other words, does that spacer go on and then the gear? And then the spacer? This one will engage. This 20 tooth gear in the front here, like this. So then obviously, we'd have to have the larger gear behind that first. bracket. This whole bracket swivels up. Okay, so it looks like this is the way that it was when I took it apart. So I've got a 96 tooth gear on uh, the screw, and then I've got a 96 tooth gear here that has a 20 tooth gear behind it. And then I've got uh, 
64 tooth gear behind this 32 tooth gear here. And I've got this in uh, what corresponds to A position. I'm using this in C position. Back over here on the threading chart, what we have is on this last position, this uh, 55 or five and a half thousandths, I should say, uh, feed rate. There's a 96 tooth gear on the uh, screw. And then C position is a 20-96. That's the 20 tooth gear stacked with the 96 tooth gear. Oops, sorry about that. 20 tooth gear stacked at the 92, uh, 96 tooth gear in the C position. And then over on the compound, we have the 32 tooth gear stacked with the 64 tooth gear in A position. I don't know why they're calling that compound. I'm not quite sure. But that's this one here. So that seems to all coincide. I'm just really surprised at how loose these gears are, but maybe that's normal. It seems like, you know, I, I can't tighten these anymore. And there's still just a lot of slop in there. Maybe that's by design. I can't really test it. I don't dare fire it up with the uh, gears. Um, because I've got the, uh, well right now I've got the half nut engaged down there. That would be disastrous. So I've got the carriage all the way down there at the end there, the half nut engaged on it. Um, actually with the bracket broken, what would happen is, is this lead screw would probably just unscrew itself or screw itself out that way and then the gears would fall out here and stop it. So for the time being, just so I don't forget uh, and accidentally do that, I'm going to uh, adjust this bracket back down that will disengage this gear from the spindle which this gear on the spindle is the main drive that starts everything I well, just remember I, I can keep this lever in the center position that should keep that in neutral that could, should keep the lead screw from turning so theoretically I I should be able to fire this up um, I got the uh, gears engaged again let's uh, Tighten up my thing here. I think I've got. Yeah, I'm going to change my spindle speed down low. Okay, I just uh, engaged the compound drive and put this uh, this belt over to the lowest setting so that this should be the lowest speed. Yeah, so that's working the way it should. The lead screw's not turning because I have this in neutral. Right now I just disengage the compound drive. It's a little noisy, but there isn't any lubrication on there right now. Alright, so I think uh, that's going to be it for the Atlas for a little bit until I get the uh, parts I need to make that uh, bracket down the end there. So I'm going to just uh, clean up my tools here and then move this on out of the way to give me a little more working room here. Uh, and I'm going to start working on this assembly of the rest of the handy.